Hey guys, so I filmed this video seven months ago now when I was super pregnant and my son is six months old tomorrow and I'm finally finishing editing this. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I actually made this hat over a year ago now, um, but I hope that you find what's in it useful. So enjoy. Hi guys, it's Kat here again from Knit Cat Paddywhack. I'm here with another knitting tutorial for you. Today's tutorial is going to be a little bit different because I'm just going to show you how to do part of a pattern, but the full pattern will be available for free on my blog. So what I've got here is a little teddy bear beanie, which I made months ago now for my nephew, and it's his birthday today, in fact, so this is going to be his birthday present. When I was back home in Adelaide last, I got back into spinning with my spinning wheel I have a lot of alpaca fleece there so I spun up a bunch of black alpaca and some white alpaca and managed to make enough for this little hat so this pattern is a design of my own but as you can see it's a fairly basic kind of ear flap hat sort of thing um, so it will be available for free on my blog and there are two sizes so this one is the 12 plus months size and this one here which is done in a commercial yarn is a little bit smaller and this is the 6 to 12 month size so what I'm going to show you today is not how to knit the whole hat because I, as I said it's a pretty uh, basic ear flap hat pattern which is knit in the round so you can find that for free on my blog but I thought it might be fun just to show you how I did the muzzle and the ears and also embroidery of the face because that's the sort of thing that you could add to anything. You could add it to a toy bear if you've made a bear or you could add it to another hat pattern that you'd like to add it to or even to some other garment like a cardigan or a jumper sweater if you're in a country where you use the word sweater. So I have this one here which I have made using my pattern in the, this is the 12 plus month size and this is going to be a hat for my daughter. And uh, it does stretch pretty far. So my daughter is actually two and a half and she's fairly big for her age, but this will stretch really well for her. So um, like I say, this is pretty adaptable for most yarns and yarn weights, as long as you use an appropriate size needle. The yarn that I, used for this hat and we'll be using for the embroidery of the face and the ears which I'm going to show you is this um, yarn called Valuable Spot Saver USA Style and it comes in these huge balls and it's available at Spotlight uh, which is a big craft warehouse in Australia and other places around Australasia and Southeast Asia so if this isn't available to you, a good substitute yarn would be a, a 10 ply or worsted weight acrylic yarn. I like acrylic because it's machine washable and I don't have time for hand washing. But um, you can of course use another yarn that you'd like for this sort of thing. It's basically not exactly a pattern I'm showing you today, just instructions on how to do the face embroidery, the muzzle and the ears. And this size muzzle that we're doing could be used on lots of different sized hats. Um, and of course we'll look a little bit different on different sized hats, but I think you could do this on any hat from even from a newborn size up and you could it would probably still look pretty good on an adult sized hat with the same sizing as long again as you're using appropriate needles and yarn for your project. So the needles that I'm using are 4.5 millimeter straight needles. And I've got my Spot Saver yarn, so I'm using white. And we're gonna start off doing the muzzle. So we'll be casting on six stitches I'll be doing the cable cast on today, but you can use whatever cast on you like. It doesn't have to be a stretchy cast on though, because this will be sewn to something else. 
So the cable cast on I think is a good one. So this is a pretty basic cast on. So we're on row one. And our first row, we're going to be doing some increases. So this in knitting notation is usually called KFB or knit front and back. So we're knitting twice into the same stitch. So hopefully I can get that in focus for you. And so we'll do a knit stitch. But before taking the stitch off the left hand needle we're going to go into the back of this stitch and knit that as well and then pull it off the needle so we're doing one knit front and back and then two knit front and back so we've increased twice so we've increased into two stitches which means that we've now got four stitches on the right hand needle and then we're just going to knit two stitches and then we're going to knit front and back into both of these stitches so again we do the knit stitch before we take the stitch off the needle we go back into the back of that same stitch and knit that as well and then we do the same for this one and that will leave us with 10 stitches Row two now, and we're just going to purl every stitch. And all of the wrong side or even numbered rows for the muzzle, all we're doing is purling every stitch. So row three and so all we're doing for this one is we're going to increase into the first stitch and the last stitch and all the other stitches in between are going to just be the knit stitch so we'll start with our first knit front and back and then we'll just knit the next eight stitches and then we'll increase into this stitch as well. So a knit front and back to increase. Row four, again, we'll just purl every stitch. And row five, we're just going to knit every stitch for this one. So this is the middle of the muzzle. So we don't need to increase or decrease for this row. Row six again is a wrong side row. So we'll just purl every stitch. Now on to row 7 and we're going to be doing some decreases now. So we're going to do a left leaning decrease for the start of this row. So this is called the slip slip knit. So we're going to slip one stitch knit wise and then another stitch knit wise. And then we're going to put our left hand needle or if you're left handed swap that. Um, into the two stitches that we just slipped and then wrap our yarn around the right hand needle and knit them. So what that does is it makes a, a decrease where the stitch on the right is is slanted in front of the stitch on the left so it's called a left leaning decrease because it's slanted to the left. Um, and if you are 
um, a more experienced knitter or you want to have that symmetry on the bottom instead of doing the knit front and back like I was doing you feel free to do and make one to the right or make one to the left to um, make your increases slanted as well but with the knit front and back it's just kind of a general increase so anyway we've done that first slip slip knit in knitting notation that's usually written as SSK and we're going to knit until we've got two stitches left and now we're going to knit these two stitches together which is a right leaning decrease so basically just knit them as if they were one stitch there you go so this one I don't know if it's very clear but this one is the opposite to the slip slip knit in that it's the stitch on the left that's leaning in front of the stitch on the right so it's leaning to the right so it's a right leaning decrease so we're on to row 8 now which again is a wrong side row so we're just going to purl every stitch And row 9 of the pattern, which is our last row of the muzzle, is we're going to do two left leaning decreases. So we'll do slip slip knit as we did before. So we slip two stitches knit wise and then and then knit them together. So um, we'll do that, we've done one of them and we'll just do another one. So we'll slip one stitch two stitch knit wise, pop the left hand needle back in and then knit the two stitches together. So we have our two left leaning decreases here and then we're going to knit until we have four stitches remaining. So that's just to knit two stitches. Now we've got four stitches remaining and we're going to do two knit two togethers. So the first one and the second one and that's that done so the only thing left to do is to cast off or bind off and we do this purl wise because we're on a wrong side row so we're going to purl two stitches it's the same as a knit wise cast off except that we're purling instead of knitting so we'll knit two stitches then pass the previous stitch over and carry on like that to the end Alright, so we've done our cast off, we've got our little muzzle shape. Now we're going to leave a somewhat of a long tail so that we can use the tail to sew the muzzle onto the hat. So make my tail, I'll be generous and make my tail about a metre long, I'm not sure that might be way too long but better to have too much rather than too little. Pass that through the last live stitch just to secure it, and that's our muzzle done. So, we're going to move on now and do the ears before we sew it all on and do the embroidery. Okay, so we're going to do our ears now for this bear hat. So, I'm going to be using the same yarn as I was before. It, except in brown so that's the value ball spot saver and we'll cast on three stitches I use the cable cast on again for these ears they're really quick to do row one we're just going to increase into every stitch and we'll use the same type of increase as we were using for the muzzle which is to knit front and back so that's one two 
to. And three. So we started with three stitches and now we've got six. Row two now and we're going to knit every stitch. So these ears are done in garter stitch rather than stocking stitch. So we're just going to have the knit stitch as our main stitch for every row apart from our increases and decreases which are special stitches. So we'll knit every stitch for row two. And then for row three is another increase row and we're just going to knit front and back into every stitch again. So where we have six stitches here, we're going to end up with 12. So we've got our 12 stitches here and then for rows 4 and 5 we're just going to knit every stitch. Now I've just finished row 5 so that was our last row so we're just going to cast off every stitch just using a basic cast off. And leave a fair tail, I'll leave maybe 40 or 50 centimetres so that we can use it to sew up at the end. And just pass that through your last remaining live stitch. And there we have our first ear. As you can see, it's made a fairly neat semicircle shape, which we will refine once we're sewing it on. The construction of this ear is like a miniaturised version of the pie shawl shaping made famous by Elizabeth Zimmerman. So that in that shaping you to make a round shape you start with a number of stitches then you double it and then you do some knitting without increasing and then you double the number of stitches and then the next bit of knitting without increasing is twice as big as the previous bit and that makes a nice circular shape and I've obviously done it to make a half circular shape and I used that kind of construction to do the train of my wedding dress as well so it's a handy little formula to have in mind when you start designing your own projects if you need to make circular or semicircular shapes so we're just going to knit another one of these ears and then we'll be ready to sew everything together so we'll grab our tapestry needle and we'll pass it through the cast off tail from the muzzle. I cut a pretty long tail when I did the cast off. I cut it a little bit shorter. I think I cut off more than I needed to. So we need to find the middle of the hat. So you could, if you're being really particular while you're knitting the hat, mark this the center line, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. And we're going to be using the whip stitch. So that means we're going round and round the outside of the muzzle to attach it to the hat. So we'll get as, as close in next to the muzzle as we can. And then go round again make sure we maintain the shape that we created with our decreases as well so we're not going to squash any stitches together as we go
Now that we've finished sewing the muzzle on, we're just going to poke our tail that we've been using to sew in through to the back of the hat and we're going to weave it in, weave in the ends and we'll make sure to do the weaving in where it will be hidden behind the muzzle just so that we don't get any white showing through on the brown parts of the hat. And once that end is woven in, we'll just cut that short. And I've got some excess tail here, so I can use that yarn to do the eyes later on. But we'll just move on now and sew on the ears. So what we're going to do is we'll start with the, the cast on tail, which comes out in the middle of the ear and we're just going to insert that into the um, hat and that gives us a bit of an anchor point for where to put the ears but it also will conceal that uh, tail and we'll be using the cast off tail to sew it all up. So that's in there, I will just we uh, weave that in so that it's secure to the hat. And we'll do the same for the other ear as well. So by just starting off with securing the cast on tails, we can check that the ears are roughly where we want them to be. So we can imagine one ear could be here and one here and they look pretty evenly placed to me, I think. All right, so I'll just go ahead and weave in this one so like the muzzle we're going to be using a whip stitch to secure the ears on and you can do the ears however you like you can sort of have them flat against the edge of the hat or you can have them curled forwards a little bit if you want that kind of effect or you could have it flat for one half and curve forward so they sort of lean into each other. I'll do, I'm going to do them more or less flat against the side of the hat. And I'm going to sew mine just so that they sort of cinch in the corners a little bit more than what the knitting did. So they will, there will be a little bit of a contour of the ear. So again, we're doing the whip stitch. So we're going round and round rather than back and forth. Once that's all sewn on, we'll Tuck our tail into the hat and weave in the end. And then we'll do the same for the other side. And I forgot to mention, but with these ears, because they're done in garter stitch, they're actually reversible in the sense that it doesn't matter which way up you have them because both sides are the same. Whereas for the muzzle, I had the stocking stitch rather than the reverse stocking stitch side showing. So there is our bear hat almost completely done. What's left now is to do some embroidery. Now don't get too scared by doing embroidery if you're new to knitting. I wouldn't, can't say that I'm an expert 
at all, but this is extremely simple embroidery, so you should be fine. So we're going to use our the same white yarn. This is just the, left, the leftover tail that was excess when I was sewing this on. So we need to decide where to put the eyes. And because we're using a knitted piece, uh, this hat is knitted, we can actually use the stitches to help us count and make sure that it is uh, evenly spaced away from the muzzle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a full stitch away from the edge of the widest edge of the muzzle, so about here, and then I'm going to go up to the the row where the muzzle ends at the top and I'm going to count up four stitches so here is where I'm going to be doing this first eye and you can place them wherever you like but um, it's a good idea to make sure that they're evenly spaced and so you don't have one higher than the other or that sort of thing so um, I've just Put my yarn in and just to secure it I will weave in this tail just with a couple of stitches just so that it doesn't show through the brown too much. So. Alright, so we're going to be doing some vertical stitches now. And I'm going to do about three vertical stitches and I'm going to do them going upwards and about a stitch high. All into the same stitch, so there's one and I'll just gather up where you can see a little bit of the weaving in. So we don't want to make it too um, tight because when we have multiple threads through the same holes, they'll sort of fill out. So I might end up needing to do four or so stitches just to make sure this eye kind of fills out and is a good uh, size. So I think I'll do four. So this is my fourth one. Yeah, and you can sort of manipulate the stitches a little bit until they, it looks about like how you want it. And I'm just trying to keep over where the white is, just so that, again, it doesn't show through in the brown. Just sort of try and secure that, this stitch. That off. I think we might have enough yarn left to do the other eye with this same piece of yarn, so that's good. Don't need to waste yarn where it's not necessary. So there's the one. So I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to count one full stitch to the left of the edge of the muzzle, and then from the top, I'm going to count four stitches up. So here and Yep, that looks even with the other eye. So pop that through and just weave in this end so it's secure. Again, we'll do our vertical stitches about a stitch high into the same stitch and we'll do three or four just until it looks the same as the other eye. Okay. 
Yep, I think that looks pretty good. So we've got our two eyes there. Very simple. Nothing too fancy, no knots even, so we'll just weave in our end using as much of the white to secure it as we can so that it doesn't show through. Okay, now for the nose, so we'll see if I can use some of this leftover scrap yarn. Okay, so we've got our two eyes and our muzzle now attached. So now what's left is to do the nose and the mouth of the bear. So I'm just going to reattach our brown. And wherever you want to start the nose, make sure it's in the middle. There, I think. Okay, so we're going to start with a triangle. So we'll pull our yarn through. We'll pull our yarn through and we'll have just a little tail hanging out which we will weave in at the end. And we're going to go up. That's the first side of the triangle. Again, don't pull this too tight, and we're going to make this one two stitches wide. So, pop our needle in level with the end of the first stitch you did. Okay. And then poke it through the same hole as where the end of the first stitch was. So we've got two sides of the triangle. Now we're going to take our needle from the inside of the hat and poke it through so that it comes out here. And then through the spot where we started the triangle. And there we get our triangle. So what's Next to do is we're going to be doing lines radiating out from this bottom point here. So we'll poke our yarn back through that center point of the triangle. And we'll just be doing some vertical lines. I'm going to sort of try and catch this top bit of the triangle as well as I do these vertical lines just so that there's not a gap. And again starting at the point of the triangle we'll do some more vertical lines and just sort of try and catch the top of the triangle as you put your tapestry needle in just to make sure it's all connected. And I'll do um, one or two more stitches, just enough, that, as many as what's needed to fill in all of the white space. Okay, so we've got our triangle there. So what's next to do is, again with a tapestry needle, poke through from the back into the point of the triangle. And we're going to sew down one stitch. Now we're going to come in from behind again, but we're going to go sort of roughly one stitch down and one stitch across. And we're going to poke our needle through there, there, so that we get the start of the bear's smile. And then poke that through here.
and then we'll go so one stitch across and then one stitch up to finish that half of the smile like that okay so then we do the same on the other side so we're going back to the center of the mouth there one stitch down and one stitch across and we'll poke in and then we're going to go so one stitch across and one stitch up so we're going to come in from the back and then poke that through to join that half of the mouth together and there you go that was easy wasn't it okay so that is our bear hat all we have to do now is just weave in some ends and there you have it so that is our bear hat finished so I showed you how to do the muzzle the ears and then the embroidery to finish off the face and like I said, you can get the pattern that I used for the hat itself and for all of the other stuff that I just showed you for free on my blog, which is knitcatpaddywhack.com. And I will link to the pattern in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed following along with this tutorial and I hope that it was helpful for you too if you were hoping to add a little bit of interest to a piece that you've been making or a piece that you've picked up somewhere. If this interested you, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and check out my blog and also my Ravelry. I'm Knit Cat Paddywhack. Thanks for watching. Bye.